Hey folks, Quilithian here, and welcome back to Let's Play A Little Tyranny. It wouldn't surprise me if this might be the last episode. We're just trying to give you guys a taste of the game over here, the uh, latest RPG from Obsidian Entertainment. We are playing as Quilicus, and we're just in the intro area. Uh, looks like this guy's willing to talk now. Fakebinder, what an honor to have one of Tunin's court visit our humble holdfast. Yeah, Tunin is the adjudicator, the Archon of Justice, and who we work for most directly. Need supplies? Bursting with energy, the merchant slams her palm down on top of the crate. If so, you've come to the right place. All right. Uh, what will it be? Um, trust you've been granted proper stewardship of the goods you're peddling. I, uh, well, you see, Fatebinder. The merchant cranes her neck to the side, scratching her neck. I think so. I've been handed these bits of scripts. She reaches across a stack of provisions to snatch a scroll case. But I'm not a woman of letters. Str numbers are my strength, as you can well imagine. Hmm. Let me see those. Certainly good fate binder. She hands you a scroll case while wearing a quizzical expression. Cursor read indicates this merchant is granted the unlimited right to trade in a logistical capacity. When not supporting an active battle, she has the right to trade grain, copper, and olives anywhere in the tiers. <laughs> I should, I could start, um, maybe I could, uh, force her to, like, bribe me or something like that. Let's, let's see what we can do. We're team evil, after all. Wow, it looks like we have a slight problem here. A problem, but how can that be? I paid a span's profit for the stewardship. What sort of problem is there? Um, fate binder. Humor, everything is fine. You have the right to trade as part of an active war effort. Currently, it would seem our armies are unable or unwilling to fight. See the problem? <laughs> Prompt into something. Or I could lie. I'll tell you this, but you have the right to trade green, worn olives, ridge wheat, and maggot meal for beastmen. Mm. This is a joke. These scripts are nonsense. Let's, let's do this. Right to trade as part of an active war effort, but, uh, you know, no one's fighting right now. There's a problem. Oh, I see the problem. Her eyes narrow and her hand slips towards the strings of copper along her, w her waist. Let's skip the, some steps in this dance, shall we? She holds up a hand with a string of copper rings dangling from her fingers. A donation to the court. Call it a proper fine. Call it tribute to our protection. Just call off your game if you say yes. <laughs> Keep your coin. Just give me the friends rate. Pulling your chain. Yeah, yeah, that'll do. I'll take the money. Cheers. 125 rings. Uh, but we did... Did get more Wrath of the Scarlet Chorus. Ooh, we're one and one for favor and wrath. That's the most honest extortion I've suffered all year. She drops a string of copper rings in your hand, clenching her fist the moment she lets go. Now, if you don't mind, we're through. She waves her hand towards the gate. Safe journey. Oh, can I not trade with her? <laughs> well, that's fine. I'm prob I probably don't need any of her gear right. at this point. I love that that was an option. Though. What is this? The torn banner bears the scratched out icon of the disfavored. The army's original symbol has been lost to history. And Graven Ashes never order replacement, preferring the blasted icon over all others. Okay. Uh, we could talk to some more people again, but I think what we're doing... we got Aurora over here. Remember her from the start? Hello! Fate Binder. Aurora salutes you as you approach. We are honored by your presence. Need something? Um... What's the situation in the well? Oath breakers hold the citadel at the heart of the valley, the one built around the base of the spire. Aurora points east towards the tower in the distance. The Matani River has been our largest headache during the siege. It's unsafe for armored troops to ford, save for at key locations, and the enemy knows this as well as we do. I know we'd be a lot further along if the Scarlet Chorus used its alleged strength in numbers to ford the river themselves and overwhelm the enemy. Aurora looks at Verse with a disapproving air. As it is, we must take the valley slowly and advance the disfavored bulwark, since that's where the real work gets done. And then Verse says, Because all it takes is numbers to cross the river under a hail of arrows, if the disfavored were quicker to act, maybe the Vendrian Guard would, wouldn't be so trained up to face us. Uh, I don't have the lore to response here. I actually don't even know. That's interesting. I know there's a lore response here, but I don't know what it would be. Ooh. All right. Uh, so I can uh, go on Aurora's side or Versus' side. Um, you know what? Like, as much as I, I tend to lead towards this favorite, I am supposed to be a bit neutral or above it all. So in this one context, I'm going to go on uh, Versus' side over here. Especially since Verse... I don't know if Verse is going to be part of my permanent party or not, but this will probably give me... Um, loyalty with her specifically. Maybe the Scarlet Chorus, I don't know. As opposed to the uh, Disfavored over here. Who I have heard earned some wrath with. Oh no, I'm, I'm reading that wrong. No, we're one of O. Okay, so versus points. There's been a lack of cooperation here. And really, that's what we need. Teamwork to get this done. Wrath at the State Favored, but loyalty with first. Okay. On both sides, I assure you. And we get nowhere by bickering over the failings of past battle. So I could ask about her history, but I don't care about that. Um, no, just carry on. 
She taps her gauntlet to her breastplate and salute. Have a pleasant siege, Fatebinder. Well, it's not going to be a siege when I'm done with it. We're just going to break that. it. So, all right, let's let's try east again here. You know, conversation is good and all, but where are we actually going? Can't do that. Can we leave? Ah, there's a gate. I see. I see. I see. Um, there are points of interest on the map as well, but oh, oh, that's him. <laughs> You there, muttering through the mouthful of congealed blood, Tarkus Demos hangs from a stake. End this, I beg you. Uh, suffered enough gr requests granted, no. But you make a far better warning to others while you're still twitching. Team Evil! Unable or unwilling to muster the strength to reply, the Oathbreaker turns away, wincing in pain. <laughs> evil, evil, evil. Uh, alright, let's go to... The, to the disfavored camp. Alright. Take you three hours. Sounds good to me. Vroom. Nice little animation there, actually. Gauntlets change how much unarmed attack damage your characters will do. Hmm. And I do know there's an unarmed skill. That was one of the things we could have picked in the character creation. I wonder how viable that is. Take what you can carry, but leave the cart. Otherwise, we seize you and your wares. You guys... But yeah, you're robbing someone? I mean, we're evil and all, but... Is this pragmatic? Let's find out. Crescent Runner. Hail, Fatebinder. The disfavor disfavored scout nods at your approach. Camp's on up ahead. Don't mind us. We're just clearing out the rabble. This is Sterling Hagnon over here. Now, we've already upset one merchant. It'd be nice to get someone we could trade with. Still don't understand what I've done to offend you. I respect that these are now disfavored lands, and I'm happy to give the Legion a proper toll. But she's going on about trading rights. What nonsense is this? Is that? I'm not allowed to trade one thing for another? It's not like I'm selling weapons to angry peasants or anything. In this favored land, these warriors have every right to kill you. You should be more thankful that you're even listening to you speak. Overlord regulates all trade. If you lack the proper permits, your goods are forfeit. None of my concern. I'm going to go with the second one. Overlord regulates all trade. Trade permit? Well, how is I... I mean, to whom would I speak for such a thing? Not us and not our problem. Maybe march your butt to Bastard City and plead your case before Tunin. But we'll lighten your burden to relieve you of your wares first. That should make the long trek a bit more bearable. Uh, so they have a right to kill you. Anything to be argued before Tunin. Maybe argued before me. That's right. I'm a fate binder. That's one of my jobs. What's there to discuss? We should kill this mongrel and the warrior pauses, placing her hand in front of her mouth. If the fate binder wishes to weigh in on the matter, courtesy demands we listen. The soldier clears her throat, looking at you expectantly. This is a disfavored matter, but I know the agents of the court so do so love to throw their judgments around. Well, you could rob me now and have my supplies today. The merchant grabs a flask from his cart. Or you can leave me alive and have fermented honey all year long. I even know a few family recipes for painkillers and healing drafts. Droughts. Droughts? Droughts? Potions. We're going to say potions. Certainly any army will need those. He uncorked a small ceramic vial and the aroma of cloves and lanolin assaults your nose. Hmm. I have... Oh, if I were my, my lawbreaker... So my background is pit fighter, right? If my background were lawbreaker or hunter, I would have an option. If I had better subterfuge or lore, I'd have more options. I don't have any of these. Um, hmm. So I could improve a relationship with this disfavored some more. Who knows? Maybe I'll get some of the loot. Or their essential goods to the war effort. We should leave the supplier intact. That's not so much a question of evil. It really does come down to what is the most pragmatic one. Sometimes that means, you know, being diplomatic with the disfavored. Sometimes that means, you know, getting the merchant trade up. You know, how much is the merchant trade going to be valuable in the long run? I don't know. Hmm. I don't think they're questioning the items. I don't think they're they're worried about that. All right, we're going to pick uh we're going to pick the merchant side this time. But he has no permits. You're allowing this lowborn wretch to profit when he should toil like any other conquered tiersman. Oh, that's true. I can't argue that. Fate Minder, is it? It is your right to settle disputes when we lock horns with the chorus, but you have no authority on this matter. Hmm. I have the authority to write him a trade pyramid. This favorite will tolerate your presence, but you'll pay them handsomely. Uh, are you questioning my judgment? Ooh. Leave this cart as a gift for Graven Ash, then leave and never come back. Oh, oh, these are good. I'm going to take the intimidation route. Lost favor with the saver, gained wrath. Oh, man. Gained athletics experience. I am. You have no right to step in when we disagree with the chorus. Or you have the right to dis it, it step in when we disagree with the chorus. Oh, this again. You know what? Have it your way. This isn't worth a court summons from Tunin. 
My deepest thanks. I thought you, I was about to be robbed and left for dead. And here I thought this favored would thank me for trying to bring in fresh provisions. I'll be sure to keep my head down and not make any waves. I should have, like, just signed the trade permit. But I don't know. I don't know. I like this. Already I'm like, there's like, there were like four really viable options there. Um, so, uh, saving your hide is worth. Guild Apprentice, Thor 30. God damn it. I don't like running this low skill character. I've got to reroll. Reroll some with subterfusion lore. Oh, well, naturally. And it's actually worth noting that it seems like about 30 is the uh, the break-even point for a lot of these things, at least early on. It might be worth having a character who's got a lore of 30, or even 35 for all those sigils. Um, subterfuge 30, athletics 30. Oh, naturally. Clears his throat, his face showing a flash of a scowl. One good deed deserves another. Well, when I have my shop up and running, I'll sell you provisions for a song and give you a proper bounty on any odd bits of weapon refine. Provided that, he jabs a finger at you, you keep standing up for me uh, should those iron goons try to rough me up a second time. You were lucky with us before, merchant. Take care you don't challenge your luck again. All right, so when he gets his shop up... Oh, verse. Slow down a moment. When he gets his shop up, I was going to say, A, he'll actually have a shop, and B, he'll give us good prices. So I guess we had two merchant opportunities, and this way we've kept one around. Slow down a moment. I know we're both eager to watch the Archons bicker over tactics like a pair of magpies, but I need to ask you something first. What's that? The voices of Narat told me that you've come as a mediator. Considering the source, well, I can't help but feel I'm only hearing half the story, so let's have it out. What's so special about you? Hmm. Why so suspicious? I've got a feeling. When the Archons are together, the air is taut as a bowstring. I can't help but think that no amount of compromise will get them seeing eye to eye. Do I just speak openly? I'm here to deliver an edict? Yes. That makes a crazy kind of sense, considering how long the siege has taxed the armies. I can understand why Kairos would send you with an edict to speed things along. Have you read it? Do you know what it says? Yeah, the Archons must claim Ascension Hall by Kairos' Day of Swords, or all will perish. Oh, more loyalty. One more thing for the Archons to fight over. Well, thanks for cluing me in. If Kairos sends any lightning our way, just tell me when to duck. What else did the voices of not tell you? Only that I could find you in the injuring ruins. Truthfully, I could have picked you out of a crowd. You're the only one of us who hasn't spent the last few months bathing in the stink of the Matani River. Uh, why do you think the Archons are odd? I've been with the Scarlet Course since the early days of the Conquest, so I can say it's been building for a few years now. There's an energy about those two, like a pair of storms moving to Clyde. I heard tell that Graven Ash and the Voices of Narat share some, shared some bad blood in the Northern Empire, but I don't know any of the particulars. By my authority, the Archons will fall in line. That sounds like exactly the attitude that set this campaign in the right direction. Or to set the campaign in the right direction. I don't envy you the task of getting them to cooperate, which sounds about as easy as teaching a tornado to heal. At least it sounds like you know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, all right. I ought to be meeting with the Archons. The war tent is just past the center of the camp. She nods towards the northeast. So we're at level two loyalty. Nice. One last thing. Be careful around those disfavored types. They take their work seriously, uh, and most have suffered too many blows to the head. Okay. Any, oh, hang on. Loot, loot, loot. Sorry, I can't. Aw. Oh, I need I got more it. subterfuge to pick that. Boo. So, what's up? The Stormcaller has arrived. The guard nods your, at your approach. It is an honor to welcome you to Disfavored Camp. Must have been a terrifying honor to be the mouthpiece of Kairos's magic, you lucky sod. Um... Oh, yes, that was the last time I proclaimed an edict. So in the conquest setup, you have an opportunity to proclaim an edict earlier on. You actually have to make some decisions about how things go. So this is a response to that, and then I can sort of, you know, make references here. Uh, I'm going to try to be a little bit more polite towards these guys again when, when it suits me. So I'll just, you know, Graven Ash protects. Gain favor. Yeah, that he does. Uh, be well, Fate Binder. Glory to Kairos. Will do. Addendum added. The Conqueror's Will. All right, quest progress. So, first I want to loot. What do you have here? New boots, which, same as mine, seem to be a complete upgrade for for verse, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, it's these over here. No downside, so the recovery time's the same, but has more deflection, more disengagement defense. So disengagement is when you move away from an enemy. So we got plenty of people to talk to, but I want to probably just focus on the main quest. 
Can't do that. Of course I can't. Glory to the voice of Narat. A fate binder Quilicus, I presume. I am Bitter Quip. I'm here as the emissary of the Scarlet Chorus. Looks at you impatiently. Um, what, what can you tell me? Which, I don't know, sounds you really like. Yeah, no, I just... That's all for now. This is not what I'm here for. I'm looking for the, the real conversation. Oh, I can go into the tent. That's probably a good sign. With each level, your character gains an increase one attribute and purchase one talent. Yeah, which actually I can probably do now. Hang on a sec. Um, yeah, I have some talents to spend in the power tree. Let's do that. Um, so I could unlock more abilities. I can unlock some stances, which I don't have yet. Aggressive stance focuses on powerful strikes. What's it do? Four armor penetrated by attack. Okay. Or reduced recovery time. I mean, ultimately, I could unlock them all. You get two-handed mastery. Gives me a chance to strike two times or three times. And always gives me more two-handed weapon damage. That sounds like what I want. Unarmed mastery, no. I'm going to get this. Unlock. I don't count. Oh, that's number of points spent. That's not how many I've got kicking around. All right, my bad. Okay, so maybe I, I don't have any skill points right now. Okay, fair enough. All right, so these two are whining. Let's go and have a chat. That's four reports of avalanches in the mountains now. The tearsmen can barely count past nine. They have neither the capacity nor the cause to close off the mountain passes. Either way, that leaves the second and fourth cohort trapped outside the valley. The Archon of War pounds his staff on the ground to punctuate his words. A large and imposing man to begin with, his profile is made larger still by the, his hulking suit of armor that hums with mystic energy. So that's the leader of the disfavored. Or it's the work of your perfidious Earthshakers. Only a fool would not suspect a traitorous Archon of poisoning the mind of his students with sedition. We would have killed the Earthshakers' guild for their master's treachery. But... I'm sure you have some perfectly valid reason for allowing them to live as your pawns. And this is the leader of the Scarlet Chorus. The Archon of Secrets passes a scepter between his hands as he speaks, twirling the rod in hypnotic circles. You hear the voices in your head. Well, hello there, Fatebinder. We'll be with you in just a moment. Well, that's quite interesting. Emerald luminescence seeps from the seams of the Archon's ragged red robes. The glow is most noticeable where his neck ought to be. His mask seems to float and spin, never pivoting or bending naturally. Hey, watch yourself. When these two get going, you don't want to get between them. I could remain silent and listen, but no. I'm going to butt in. I am here to proclaim Kairos' edict. The valley was sealed in preparation for this moment. Gain favor with both. Nice. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to be wimpy about this. I'm interjecting. Uh, so this is Iron Marshal Erenios. Governor Quilicus, long have we been honored by your iron... And now we are honored by your presence. I must apologize for my lord's temper running high of late. One of the decisions you can make during the conquest phase is what to do with um, basically a source of iron. And since we took everything that was sort of pro... Um, pro disfavored, um, these guys have iron over here. Oh, that's interesting. So this is the disfavored stuff. And this is specifically Graven Ash's relationship. That's interesting. I could bow to the Archons. No. I'm going to glare silently. Stormcaller, it is Favor. an honor to have you with us. I would imagine you are here with another of Kairos' edicts. Yep. Perhaps another catastrophe that will punish our foes for hiding behind their walls? Not exactly. They're not the ones that are going to be punished by the edict. My soldiers tell me you helped Commander Drotus on your way through Edrin. You honor the court with your selfless cooperation, for that is the sort of camaraderie that Kairos demands of us all. On the last of his words, the Archon of War glares at the voices of Narat, furring his brow as he utters the word camaraderie. Uh, require no thanks, come bearing an edict. Yeah, are you all done bickering? I have an edict to proclaim. My dear binder, we won't be done bickering until the last of Ash's hair falls out. We'll pause for you to read your little missive. 
Go on, go on. Don't keep us all in suspense. My little missive, excuse me? time, Brother Tunon selects you for the glory of proclamation. You should be honored. Tell us, what has the Overlord decided to unleash upon the Oathbreakers? So, yeah, the question of tone comes up here. The Overlord's loyal servants must hold Ascension's Hall. Uh, you need some encouragement or in honor of your incompetence and disarray. I'm going to go with this middle ground. It seems you need some encouragement to work together. Kairos' edict will end the lives of everyone in the valley unless Ascension Hall is claimed by Kairos' Day of Swords. Wrath and favor. The earth sways with each word you utter, the air thickening with warmth as you pronounce the tersely phrase commandment, its every syllable drafted by the hand of Kairos. With the edict proclaimed, your pulse quickens, and the muscles in your legs, worn from a long trip down the mountains, feel renewed, the tired limbs now buoyant with vigor. Wow, that's kind of cool. The Overlord means to compel us into action. No doubt the avalanches in the mountains are part of this ultimatum. No doubt. We must conquer the Oathbreakers or die in failure. There is no room for error and no other way out of this valley alive. That's right. We'll need to advance across the Matani. We lose everything if we stand still. And we move to back up Plan Green. The Earthshakers didn't make it over the mountain in time. So we do this the hard way. Over the walls instead of through. The Arkham of War taps a finger against his temple. A low rumble escapes from under his beard. So, you found your backbone at last! <laughs> oh, we were worried past humiliations would make you soft, timid. That was a record for you, right? The Baker's Dozen lost in one sortie. If you had waited for the chorus reinforcements, maybe we'd have eyes and ears on the matter. The Archon of Secrets passes a scepter from one hand to the next, chuckling softly with each toss. So we hear again his voices in our head. Watch him squirm. So many tears over replaceable, expendable, useless soldiers. I miss the old Archon of War. You'd never see blood echo in a blubbering mess over a few dead killers. He'd used the knuckle bones of his best disciples for jewelry and even made a breastplate out of his dead brother's... ribcage, because that's how a real man deals with grief. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, I get to do something with my subterfuge of 20. They call you the Archon of Secrets, but you certainly don't seem to know anything remotely useful. I second the fate binder. Ooh, Thought you gained had the fear with first. Of one of those oath breakers rattling about that bronze gourd of yours. Would Kairos' mighty spy master please enlighten this gathering of allies with some scrap of strategic insight? The Archon of Secrets turns his head to the side until the face of his mask has turned around and a new facet of the mask prevents it, presents itself as facing forward. When the next Archon speak, or when next the Archon speaks, the trembling voice of a younger man can be heard. Our river was to be the bulwark, but with the Tidecasters slain, what hope remains? It's so cold in here. Help me, please. Huh. Well, that's an interesting ability. The Archon turns his head far to the side until the previous facet of his fa mask now looks forward. Our sources tell us the Oathbreakers had some sort of magical trick in store. But this knowledge is tinged with fear, trepidation. If we make a move for the Matani, we suspect the Oathbreakers will mount a counterattack that is equal parts valiant and futile. Then enough talk. There's work to be done. My lord, Barak and his band... Eric, Commander of the Stone Shields. Okay. And his band have been drilled on the Echo Call Assault plan. The Crescent Runners should be briefing him as we speak regarding the latest enemy movements along the river. I will dispatch him as once. The Iron Marshal salutes, clapping her gauntlet to her breastplate. And I will ensure the Chorus stands ready to march. If the Disfavored can take the river, the Chorus has the manpower to secure the outer ring of the valley. Fifth eye, okay. Our soldiers clamor for battle, and at last we shall have it. Verse. We command you to continue guarding the Fate Binder. Tunon's chosen is our honored guest, and must be shown our finest hospitality. I won't let you down, boss. He'll get through the campaign in one piece, as long as he doesn't do anything too stupid. The Archon twirls the scepter one last time, then taps the fifth eye on the shoulder. Oh, oh yeah, fifth eye on the shoulder and the two depart. You hear the voice in your head. Suit yourself, Fate Binder. The more you ignore us... 
And then we got wrath over favor. That's probably what's going on there. I don't know. Hmm. Finally, the fool and his puppet are gone. Perhaps now I can hear myself think. Rarely do I question Kairos' judgment. But I will never understand why the voices of Narat is given such authority. I shudder to think what will become of us all should Tunon favor him in the end. Though the edict threatens the Scarlet Chorus just as it threatens us, I cannot shake the feeling that our allies will work against us. But at least we have allies in the court. My best soldiers have never wanted for a good blade or suit of armor, and I know I have you to thank for it. I fear we will have to call on you for more than just a few works of iron. You've shown your worth in war, and your name has been known to the Legion since the very beginning of this long conquest. So I'd ask that you join us this one last time to help us wrap up this last objective. If you wish to be counted amongst the Glorious, speak with the Iron Marshal. She will direct the order of battle until we are ready for the final push into the Citadel. I'm short a few scouts, short a few soldiers, short a few everything. I'm sure my brethren would be grateful for the assistance of a skilled outsider. Hmm, Claire silently. <laughs> I just love that that keeps being an option. Uh, and what about the Scarlet Car Chorus? How will they be helping? I ask myself that question often. While we take the river crossing... The Scarlet Chorus should be using their sizable presence to remove the Oathbreaker patrols lurking in the Outer Valley. The Oathbreakers have maintained a sizable force outside the Citadel. We need the Chorus's manpower to scour the region. Otherwise, the Oathbreakers will attack our heels once we've crossed the Mitanni. All right, I'd be honored to help. Uh, the Iron Marshal salutes Graven Ash, then turns to leave the tent. I will be at the training grounds readying the soldiers. Find me there when you're ready. She pauses, clearing her throat. And though I am loath to mention it, the Chorus can likely use your assistance. They certainly won't secure the Outer Valley on their own. Fifth Eye will be somewhere in that rat's nest they call a camp due east. Seek him out if you must. All right. So we'll have, you know, some various just making friends kind of quests. I mean, I can probably interact more over here. But, well, I just want to move on for now. Uh, but first, I'll loot things. Aw. Can't do that. Aw. Loot, loot better. Loot harder. Sorry. I can't. Yeah, you suck. Mm -hmm. I'll have to come back in here with a character with different stats. I was very combat-focused in my setup, but maybe I should have been set up for more diplomacy. So, we got a large area over here. Oh, we got a sack of grain we can loot. And speak with the Iron Marshal. What is this? Some fruit. All right. We can probably cook or something. Now that you have delivered word of Kairos' edict to the armies, the time remains remaining until Kairos' Day of Swords appears next to the current date. Wow, the terms of Kairos' edict must be met by this date or everyone in Vendrian's world will die. We have an actual time limit. That's crazy. I can't just wait for, um, you know, I can't just wander back and forth. I will have to actually be a little bit focused in what we do. Hmm, there's lots of little lootables all over the place. Like that. Oh, oh I can actually pick this one. Only a 16. Hooray! Hooray. So we got, there's Iron Marshal over here, who's the person we have to talk to, to progress the quest as is. Although we'll also have to go east, apparently, for the chorus, but we'll just start with this. Hello. Don't just coddle the impact. Push back with your shield. Take the momentum. Iron Marshal Erenios, field commander, the sailor, pounds her fist in the air as she calls out to the warriors on the training field. I said, eyes on your opponent's waistline. If you spend more than a glance checking his footwork, you've lost. Stormcaller, welcome to our camp. The disfavored officer snaps to a salute. I'm sorry your arrival isn't better for, for isn't for better reasons, but it's a pleasure to see you again all the same. So there's my last reference to this person based on our conquest setup. It is reassuring to see that Tunin sends us a fate binder with the proper moral compass. Um, as mentioned, you're short on warriors and need help. What's the situation? I want to be all business. I don't care about their feelings. I have brigades amassing along Placid, Echo Call, and Little Tooth crossings. The Vendrian Guard may be able to hold one bridge, but they cannot hold against a concerted three-pronged attack. I have no right to give you orders, but... Her words falter, a short cough breaking her flow. But we all die to Kairos' edict should we fail, so I'm not about to let my pride blind me to the value of good help. Um, yeah, what happened last time you tried to cross the river? Defeat in detail. We carved a bloody path up 
to the river, but at that point, everyone who charged ahead was lost. We had no chorus backup. It was just a few disfavored squads. I can't tell you exactly how they were defeated, but we lost the whole assault team. She shakes her head, letting out a long, pained sigh. We found bodies washing up the river for days. It's not often the tears been put up such a good fight. It certainly made us reevaluate the numbers we'll need to take this valley. Really? Are you sure your scouts didn't give you all sorts of details about the enemy and you just chose to disregard our warnings? Hmm. 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 Well, it sounds like your lack of caution is to blame, not the Scarlet Chorus. Lack of caution? My legion is my family. I do not play loosely with their lives. The only blame here is on the Oathbreakers. It is their intransigence that created this conflict in the first place. There's no need to blame your teeth, at least. I can hear them grinding from over here. Anyway, I will assist. Then our plan might just work. The Iron Marshal lifts her gauntlet close to her face, shifting her eyes from you to the metal articulations. We are loath to work with those who do not share our training and our values, but we know that Tunon the Adjudicator selects only the most capable minds for his court, and I trust you will honor us all in the field. Antio will be leading the charge at Echo Call Crossing. Assisting you will be the barrack of the stone shields. She points to a heavily armored soldier standing sentry at the edge of the training field. Before you ask, no, the forge bound weren't sloshed on a dapple seed when they fitted his armor. He survived the full force of the Edicus Swarms as his armor doesn't exactly come off. Tactically, it's quite brilliant, but otherwise it's something of a curse. Tapping her helmet twice, Irenios signals to the hulking presence. Beric, come meet the Fate Binder. Oh, that's this guy over here. Beric, the soldier leaps up to you. Better resembles an amalgamation of rusted blades and mismatched pieces of armor fused into a vaguely human shape. He reeks of sweat, feces, and whatever oil treatment keeps him flexible. Fate Binder, the Iron Marshal has tasked me with keeping you alive, and I have no intention of disappointing her. That should be enough assurance for anyone. You're staying out of trouble? I wasn't sure you would recognize me, Binder. Familiar face emerges from the unfamiliar wall of Walking Iron. For a moment, you can recall the features of Barrack of the Stone Shields when he wore the traditional disfavored uniform during the Stalwart campaign. The way he looks must, much no, changed. Not staying out of trouble, just solving it. I take ba it you're with us for Echo Call? Barrack wraps his gauntlet against the twisted bands of iron that form his breastplate. Barrick, is that you under there? I had no idea you were in Vendrian's well. Wait. Fatebinder, do you know this walking anchor? Wait, you two know each other? No. Oh, that is to say, yes. I'm already as familiar with this ironclad halfwit as I care to be. She regards Barrick with a mixed look. We don't have time to trade jabs today, Purse. After the siege, you can throw as many tantrums as you please. I suggest that we remain focused on the mission. No offense to the mission, but seeing you looking like a garbage heap and reeking of a mass grave is more amusing by far. Did you forget how to don your armor, or did Grave and Ash leave you out in the rain? I encountered Barrack in the Stalwart campaign, though he appears much changed. He's an excellent soldier. You're generous to say so. I'm afraid I left the better part of myself on the killing fields of Stalwart. But it's still in my pride and honor to serve the Legion. His voice falters. You can't tell if it's hesitation or regret that stalls him. The Fate Binder will be joining us for the push across the river. I figured an extra hand might help. And more importantly, if my worries come true and the Chorus tries to impede the mission, we will have an observer from the court on our side. I look forward to working with you again, especially after our time in Stalwart. You defended our honor to the Scarlet Chorus, and a friend of the Legion never goes unthanked. Better to work with the Honorable Binder than some Chorus children. Ah, because I have at least favor one with the disfavored, I got this. Okay. I ask that Barrett accompany you there to arbitrate the cooperation between his company and the Scarlet Chorus. Echo Crossing is now unlocked in the world map, okay? Barrick, you've been without a cohort since the last Battle of Star Wars. It's time we give you, gave you a task more worthy than hauling wagons and leading training drills. She plants her hand on her hips and speaks in clipped official terms. Ash has assigned you to the Fate Binder service. You're to assume this task is ongoing until we find a more permanent spot for you, which could very well mean the swiftly approaching end of this war, or when the Fate Binder dismisses you. Is that understood? I suppose I could be in worse company than that of a renowned mage slayer. I have seen how much this one treats any upstart who fails to recognize the benefit of Kairos' peace, though I would much rather attend to my duties here. That is, unless you're serious about my change of assignment, Iron Marshal. That's an order, Beric. She shakes her head and sighs, returning her focus to you. He can be as stubborn as pulling a spire out of the earth, but he's a good soldier. I hope you don't mind the company. 
Uh, I'm honored to have a member of the Iron Legion at my side. Woot. I got an achievement for building a reputation. Excellent. I have a reputation ability. What is this? You have unlocked enough reputation to unlock a new ability. Open the reputation UI uh, by pressing R to see the new ability available to your character. Oh, most factions have abilities where characters can acquire as you build reputations with them. Okay, so first of all, I have little ticky marks here. Ah. Oh, that's Barrack has an attribute point up. So level up. Mm-hmm. With each level, you can increase one of your character's attributes. Might, fitness, quickness, wits, vitality, resolve. Each of these attributes, yada, yada, yada. Till the attribute, which is 20, to raise an attribute. Or 19, to raise it from 19 to 20, you need two points. Mm-hmm. So, Barrack has an attribute point available. All right. Um, he's probably going to be the frontline dude, actually. Since he looks pretty armored up. He has higher health already. Higher defense. I wonder what his inventory looks like. He's got, like, locked armor. Because all his armor is fused in. It can't be changed. And it looks pretty defensive-y. So we're going to go ahead and get him to be, um, I don't know, more health. He can he can tank for us. Yep, that sounds fine. Uh, and he's got a level up waiting. Excellent. And again, I don't have one. Okay, but he does. He doesn't have anything yet. We're going to give him the uh, Sentinel Tree. He does have Striking Iron already. Does bonus damage if the target is engaging him, which sounds pretty good. Resolves enemy resolve near him, or reduces the resolve. Um, gain a chance to attack enemies as they engage you. Okay, and Sentinel over here. Oh, Clash of Iron. Mocking invitation, challenging enemies to attack him. Okay, so this is a taunt. Yeah, for 6.5 seconds. So it sounds like, at the very least, we have to unlock the taunting ability for him, and then we might go and combo more things with that. Um... These are our quest list, yes. Our reputation. So Oh, even going high up on Wrath gives us more abilities. Ooh, neat. With the disfavored, yeah, we have reached here. Stand together, stand tall. Passive. Pulse rate. Per three seconds. Allies in the area effect, plus one revolve for three seconds. Radius three. So Oh, there it is. So it's just always on. There's a weapon set. A cooperation attack. Oh, we've unlocked one because of Barrack. The Barrack and the Fate Binder both bang on their shields and armor, harassing an enemy. The target is compelled to attack Barrack for a short time, while the Fate Binder's mocking gesture leaves the enemy confused and off guard. The foe loses all ability to parry and dodge until they recover their fences. All right, that sounds pretty good. All right, so, I mean, we have... Order of Execution. Overlord... Oh! Has decreed that the valley... Yeah, so because of the uh, the edict, we're all getting plus one resolve. Why doesn't... Oh, Barrack might be too far away for the other effect. Um, there you go. Now you've all, you've all got that with the extra resolve as well. Alright, well that's kind of neat. Um, so, I'm just going to go ahead and leave and go to the next point quest thing now. I'm sure there's a lot of things we can do in town, a lot of people we can talk to. But we're going to go and try to accomplish some sort of military thing first. I think this word came in. I don't know if that would have unlocked something different. Uh, we can go to the Scarlet Court camp, which apparently if we go there, we will get some more quests. But I'm going to go right to Echo Call and see how that goes. It'll probably go badly because I haven't done everything. But we're going we're gonna to go here and then wrap that up. Ambush! I want more combat. I want to try things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So yeah, probably just, just go through the next encounter and then we'll be wrapping up this video. And that'll probably be it because I don't think we've got time in our schedule to do a full Let's Play of That's this. Far enough, Fate Finder. Who the hell are you? Ebb. A woman's voice booms from atop a nearby outcropping. Flashes of aquamarine body paint. Hmm. Uh, peek out from under her loose-fitting traveler's garb and her outfit is festooned in braids and knots of sailor's line. Flanked on either side by warriors dressed in Vendrian Guard regalia, the woman leans on an elaborate bladed staff pulsing with arcane energy. A swath of blue fabric rests draped on over her arm. In accordance with ancient customs north and south, I offer and request a delay of blade. There are matters we must discuss without fear of reprisal. The woman bows deeply, lowering her head in a practice display of etiquette. The warriors by her remain in ready stance, their nerves clearly on edge. Hmm. So in accordance with ancient customs, north and south, I abide by this truce. 
You get you have me at a disadvantage. Glare silently. <laughs> Would you detain a fate binder of the Archon of Justice? Unwise, or I could just draw my weapon. You know, I'm a representative of the Archon of Justice. It feels like you know if there's an official sort of parlay mechanic. All right, let's do it. As is our custom, we are ready to kill to defend our lands, but we kill only in fair battle. We don't slay our prisoners. We know this isn't Kairos' way, but we must have hope. A few of my kin have gone missing, and though they may have perished, I have to inquire on the off chance they still live. If Captain Tarkas Deimos still lives, we would negotiate for his release. Well, I, I don't know. When I last saw him, he was still alive, but technically his execution had been ordered. I mean, presumably he's... He's not dead, though. Well, I mean, he's probably dead by now. It's been hours. Um, what would you offer in exchange? We would offer you five choir men that got lost on patrol. They're healthy. Got all their limbs, too. I would not have us barter with oathbreakers. Certainly not for anything less than disfavored lives. Dude. You say there's something worth less than a disfavored life. Call me intrigued. Tarkus Demos is dead. I see. That is as I feared, but thank you for telling me all the same. I prefer closure to wishful thinking. So presumably you're going to be another party member later. That's interesting. If I may make one more inquiry. What if Palox Tyrell, did he survive? Uh... Oh, that's the guy who took Drastus hostage. Yeah, he did not survive the encounter. I love these little reminders. Another dead Oathbreaker. Whoever you will ask about next, I assure you nothing can be done. No. He's, he's dead. Done. My apologies, Fatebinder. I had a terrible feeling this errand was in vain from the start. I had no expectations that our friends could be saved, as I'm sure the time for swapping prisoners is long gone. But at least I know of what became of them. That'll have to be enough. Hmm. 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 What is her personality like? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I bow towards her. I mean, but courtesy, you know, we're evil, but it doesn't mean we have to be jerk faces, right? There's a difference. Um, we're through. Leave while you still can. Then I will take no more of your time. Apologies. We will depart at once. She bows curtly, never letting her eyes leave yours before turning to leave. A moment later, the bodyguards turn to follow. Interesting. Right. Now, part of me is like, it might be good to rest since, you know, we do have some injuries going on here, but we're on a time limit, man. I guess that's it. That's the entire encounter. Uh, there is something on the map over here. What is that? Oh, ooh, hello. Hold on. There's a few things. I mean, the pond... See the faintest outline of soldiers armed in the bottom of this pond, a victim of previous battle. Yeah, but there's loot. Okay, not much. Here, just go into the stash, that's fine. And then over Can't here. Oh, just mushrooms. Okay. Alrighty. Well, let's just leave the map and that's gonna be fine. And return over here. Boom 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 boom. Oh, I should uh, set the AI rules for uh Barrack. Barak Obama. The believe all your character gains. You can increase one attribute and purchase one new talent. Yeah, I want to level up, man. Um, oops. No, right click. You. Defend party and... Yeah, you're a protector. Protecting the party. Start a combat. Use blood bond on an ally. Maintaining his phallic stance. Okay, I don't know what those are. I haven't actually looked at your abilities, have I? Uh, striking iron. Iron tolling. Clash of iron. That's your mocking invitation. And your... Uh, that's not the stances. I guess you don't have a stance unlocked. So you're just describing some of the abilities that you don't necessarily right. have yet. All right, fair enough. Battle unfolds without us. Onward! Watch the enemy may strike at any moment. Okay. Back over here. Maintain defensive posture. Winded, the disfavored commander clutches his bloodstained chest piece as he takes a deep breath, gathering his thoughts. His focus is on the scattered wounded men around him. He has yet to notice you. Your plan has been a rousing success. Most of our troops, dead. A bridge destroyed, and the Vendrine Guard push us back to where we started. Ladies and gentlemen, the finest the North has to offer. And for your next act, okay, bitter quip is like, yeah, those are some bitter quips. 
I needed those furies on point. Don't mock my strategy after working against it. We could have taken them. Remain silent. <laughs> you just wasted dozens of lives walking into a trap. I'll mock your idiocy as much as I want, so long as it continues to amuse me. What is happening? Shouldn't you be on the other side of the bridge? We tried to rush the western bridge. Blow for blow, we had them running, but... His gaze drops, a long sigh escapes. But halfway across... Halfway across, the whole damn river just... The blood chancer gesticulates, flailing for words. Lurched up, the cursed Matani swallowed the bridge and most everyone on it. Only real soldiers we have left are the Scarlet Furies that I, quite wisely, directed into a flanking position. A few of us kept our footing, but the advantage was lost. We had to fall back. As we did, the Oathbreakers surged down the East Bridge. We held the ground until they fled back across the river, but now we're back where we started with only a fraction of the strength. Uh, he was in command, should have concentrated forces where he directed. A member of the School of Tides is alive and working with Vendering Guard, I assure you. She's the culprit. Direct attack was a dumb idea. Well, we're going to do this one. We're going to be smart instead of, you know, making people cranky for no reason. School of Tides. That would explain it. I saw a woman dressed in blue at the other side of the river. Uh, didn't seem like she fit in with the others. Oh, that's Ebb! Oh, oh. Wait. Should I have killed her? Uh oh. Had we focused our strength into one perfect lunge, we could have crossed the bridge before the enemy knew what was killing him, but it's too late. But it's not too late. We can use the Scarlet Furies to... No, fool. Stop suggesting ways to get my gang killed. Are you working for the Oathbreakers? We should wait until the enemy is no longer on high alert. Hmm. Well, if his plan isn't a good one, and honestly, it does sound a little dumb, what would you suggest instead? It was time for initiative and time for patience. Try a different part of the river or come back later. The enemy's too worried for us for now. We're in such a rush to see Kairos' Zeta come to pass. Sorry, Quip, but I'll strap you to my back and charge down that other bridge alone. But doing nothing isn't an option. Okay, we can sit and wait for Kairos' Zeta to kill us, or we can do something. If this were a hearing of grievances, I'd tell you to... I'll let you call the shots, but we are talking about the lives of my gang. Conscripts are a copper a dozen, but Furies? I have worked hard to secure the loyalty of my gang. I will not scrap fine warriors on so buffoonish a plan. Perhaps you can be covering the cost of enticing replacements. How about you just tell me what you would like in exchange for cooperation? No. Strike him. What was that? Ooh, wrath. An experience. Your fist lands a telling blow, staggering the chanter. A bruised smile covers his face when he turns back to face you. Blood in me all you want, but the Furies will only follow my orders. Strike me again. This is a waste of my time. Um, Alright, just tell me what you want in exchange for cooperation. Well now, what would make me happy? Chanter ta ta taps his chin as he loudly sighs in false contemplation. Maybe I should have just hit him again. Oh, I know. Fate Binder. Order at Antonio, or Atio, Antio here to beg for my help. Make sure he stretches out incapable he is and how critical it is the chorus rescued him. Yeah, no, I should have just hit you again. There must be another answer. Arg. I want to punch him again. God damn it. See, I gotta stop being... Uh... God damn it. Can I not punch him again? I'm not paying you money. Fine, you know what? Here it is. Beg, grovel. Do whatever it takes. I wish you wouldn't feed this one's ego. We deserve none of the satisfaction you'll take from this disgusting exchange. By Kairos' fist. Commander At Antio turns his head aside, spitting through half-muttered curses. Fine. Please. Oh, please. Help us, bitter quip. Without your intervention, this disfavored mission will most certainly fail. He turns away from the chanter, its impish grin, to stare at you with searing irritation. Ah, stretching out a smug victory. He rubs his belly with sated glee. If only I could capture those words in my water skin and have sips of your delicious failure in my days of despair. Chanter nods with a satisfied smile. Now that we have that settled, listen up. For this to work, my furies need a moment to get out of cover. Fatebinder, you need to run up to the East Bridge. Don't get yourself killed, just draw their attention. I'll signal my fur furies to send a rope across while you have them occupied. No time to waste. Let's hope your gang delivers. And Antio turns to you, nodding with a heavy frown. Thank you, Fatebinder, and good hunting. I have to attack the Eastern right. Bridge. Okay. Ooh, and loot. Let's see if those are better upgrades later, maybe. I don't know. Money. All right. More boots. All right. And an enemy in the distance. Called an Outrunner. Huh. Trap detected. What? 
Also, we got some level ups here. Hold on. I'll spill your guts. Pull back. First things first. Let's level up. I would like more smash. Smash harder. Okay. And I have a talent point to spend. So, leadership. Party gains one additional weapons. Oh, no, I don't care about that. Um, oh, I need higher level for this stuff. Okay, so not leadership right now. Oh, wait. There's even more stuff? What? Okay, so there's two pages. Leadership, defense, power. Agility, range, magic. So, I mean, agility, range, magic type stuff doesn't sound like me. Power sounds like me. Cryer Sunder. Oh, this would add a stun effect to the Sunder ability. That sounds pretty good. Or, right, the two-handed mastery, which I was also quite keen on. Mm, I do like stuns. Let's get some of that. Okay, meanwhile, so we can disarm this stuff? Oh, so, switching people. I don't know. Level up bonus. Oh! During the level up, I get an extra perk. Come. So yeah, we're gonna charge. I was gonna check to see if she happened to have a ranged weapon. Maybe the secondary weapon set? She does. So I'm actually gonna get her switch to that, and I'm gonna switch her AI to be ranged. Because we have a lot of people going into melee. And I'm gonna say, hey, let's use the iron tolling on this guy. Stand together. Oh, blink strike. Oh. Interesting. On it. Stun, sunder, more abilities. And we'll throw a blood soaked stone on this guy. So she's got her AI set to range, but she will still do other things. I think. There we go. Knock down, blood, and just beat them up. Excellent. Loot. Yeah, gauntlets. Eh. Eh, eh. On it. Take all and move. Alright. So we have to go and draw their attention over here. Let's do it. Oh, I could look at the water. Oh, they have a drawbridge. What? You there, and you, signaling her warriors to the bridge. A woman in the regalia of Avendrian guard, Captain, pierces the commotion with her shrill soprano. Get over here, that his favorite are back. Guess they forgot a javelin or two. Be a doll, would you, and hurl them back. Wait, not another disfavored. This is a fate binder. She looks you up and down. Odd, I would not have expected. Hmm, well, just more soldiers, here to convince us to kneel down and lose our heads. Uh, again, the lore, this is driving me crazy. Um. <laughs> the sooner you surrender, the sooner your children can live in prosperity. Not you, though. It's fine. Victorious pillagers say all sorts of things to justify sticking their spears into nations and raping their way into the family vines. She waves a hand at you dismissively. You're cute for taking your role so seriously. Your friends seem to have misplaced most of their squad. Guess they are somewhere in my river? She shrugs sarcastically. My family's been protecting this river for six generations, so it's easy to lose track of all the looters and vagrants we've had to feed to eels. Unless you want to try a running leap over, you're stuck. Maybe try heading downstream to Placid Crossing. We have more warriors there, and I'm certain they'd be just as happy to kill you. Placid Cross will grant you mercy. Tidecaster did this. Same one that met me for a truce? Yeah, let's do that. Trying to take stock of our crew. Hmm, she lets out a snort, laughing to herself. We've had unexpected help of late. Kill and rape a realm long enough, and everyone comes out of the woodwork to shiv you in the ear. Let us cross, and we'll grant you mercy. Hold your oars a second. I have a statement prepared from Captain Ari for just this moment. She reaches into her belt and with an impish smile, pulls her hand out to reveal nothing but the local hand gesture for a penis. Wait, there's a second missive in here somewhere. She feigns scouring her pockets once more before displaying her phallic gesture once again. <laughs> as assuming as I, uh, amusing as I find this soon-to-be corpse, I, it would appear that her distraction has paid off. He nods off to the west. Satisfied, she turns to leave, calling out to you as she does. I wouldn't keep standing there, Fatebinder. The river's currents are quite unpredictable. Right. So I can't interact with the water. Matani River forms the boundaries of the Apex's center ring. Central ring. The river narrows considerably at Echo Call, making it one of the few access points for the river's interior. That's where we are now. Alright, so having done that, presumably people have crossed. Ooh, we got a box. 
and a building. We got camping supplies and things. Sorry, I can't. Oh, we've actually picked up a fifth camping supply. In uh, uh, Pillars of Eternity, I think you could only get four in total. It looks like she wants to have a conversation. How did you do that? Do what? Back in the Archon's war tent, you cast an edict as casually as reading a supply shipment. How did you do that? Uh, well, I've done it before. Don't I look stupid? You're going to cast the edict. The storm's stalwart, didn't you? The one that tore the battlefield apart with the cyclone of Kairos' anger. Yes, that was me, all right. Well, call me impressed. Considering that you've read the words of Kairos more than once, I'm surprised you're even alive to tell about it. Your vocal cords should have turned to ash by now. I'm not trying to make you feel uncomfortable. It's just worth recognizing that you've what you've done. Not only are you Tunin's fate binder, you're the mouthpiece of the Overlord. Give me plenty of reasons to stick around. You're going places, and I want to see where they lead. Yeah, that's, you know... Uh, what do questions you need? for you? Yeah, we'll talk later. We don't have time for this. Actually, I think we're going to have to wrap this up. I did want to feed in one more fight, but we've gone on probably just a bit too long. Got to put a cut in here. Unfortunately, my schedule today is a little bit cramped, but I really like this. Really, really digging it. Um, for some reason, it's, it's actually working better for me than pillars of eternity and i can't tell you why um so far it feels like everyone's got a little bit more personality and it's a little bit more interesting uh and i think pillars of eternity was going to get that maybe you know a little bit later uh and i never Sorry, did finish I pillars can't. of eternity but i've got a good amount in there and I, I don't know it never never really connected with me the same way love the mechanics and a lot of people really love the world um and i mean the uh, the stronghold system is really cool like it is pillars of eternity undeniably a really good game but for some reason never quite hooked me. Uh, and I think this might more. I don't know. But that's going to be it for today. Thanks for watching, folks, and I'll see you guys next time.